France countries defined. France French, FS, officially, the French Republic French, our public Franais, Epiblic FRSC, is a transcontinental country predominantly located in Western Europe and spanning overseas regions and territories in the Americas and the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. Its metropolitan area extends from the Rhine to the Atlantic Ocean and from the Mediterranean Sea to the English Channel and the North Sea. Overseas territories include French Guiana in South America, St. Pierre and Miquelon in the North Atlantic, the French West Indies, and many islands in Oceania and the Indian Ocean. Due to its several coastal territories, France has the largest exclusive economic zone in the world. France borders Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Switzerland, Monaco, Italy, Andorra, and Spain in continental Europe, as well as the Netherlands, Suriname, and Brazil in the Americas via its overseas territories in French Guiana and St. Martin. Its 18 integral regions, five of which are overseas, span a combined area of 643,801 km2, 248,573 sq and contain close to 68 million people as of July 2022. France is a unitary semi-presidential republic with its capital in Paris, the country's largest city and main cultural and commercial center, other major urban areas include Marseille, Lyon, Toulouse, Lille, Bordeaux, and Nice. Inhabited since the Paleolithic era, the territory of metropolitan France was settled by Celtic tribes known as Gauls during the Iron Age. Rome annexed the area in 51 BC, leading to a distinct Gallo-Roman culture that laid the foundation of the French language. The Germanic Franks formed the Kingdom of Francia, which became the heartland of the Carolingian Empire. The Treaty of Verdun of 843 partitioned the empire, with West Francia becoming the Kingdom of France in 987. In the High Middle Ages, France was a powerful but highly decentralized feudal kingdom. Philip Roman II successfully strengthened royal power and defeated his rivals to double the size of the crown lands by the end of his reign. France had emerged as the most powerful state in Europe. From the mid-14th to the mid-15th century, France was plunged into a series of dynastic conflicts involving England, collectively known as the Hundred Years' War, and a distinct French identity emerged as a result. The French Renaissance saw art and culture flourish, conflict with the House of Habsburg, and the establishment of a global colonial empire which by the 20th century would become the second largest in the world. The second half of the 16th century was dominated by religious civil wars between Catholics and Huguenots that severely weakened the country. France again emerged as Europe's dominant power in the 17th century under Louis Roman XIV following the Thirty Years' War. Inadequate economic policies, inequitable taxes, and frequent wars, notably a defeat in the Seven Years' War and costly involvement in the American War of Independence, left the kingdom in a precarious economic situation by the end of the 18th century. This precipitated the French Revolution of 1789, which overthrew the ancient Argyme and produced the Declaration of the Rights of Man, which expresses the nation's ideals to this day. France reached its political and military zenith in the early 19th century under Napoleon Bonaparte, subjugating much of continental Europe and establishing the First French Empire. The French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars shaped the course of European and world history. The collapse of the empire initiated a period of relative decline in which France endured a tumultuous succession of governments until the founding of the French Third Republic during the Franco-Prussian War in 1870. Subsequent decades saw a period of optimism, cultural and scientific flourishing, as well as economic prosperity, known as the Belle Pac. France was one of the major participants of World War I, from which it emerged victorious at a great human and economic cost. It was among the Allied powers of World War Roman II, but was soon occupied by the Axis in 1940. 
Following liberation in 1944, the short-lived Fourth Republic was established and later dissolved in the course of the Algerian War. The current Fifth Republic was formed in 1958 by Charles de Gaulle. Algeria and most French colonies became independent in the 1960s, with the majority retaining close economic and military ties with France. France retains its centuries-long status as a global center of art, science, and philosophy. It hosts the fifth largest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites and is the world's leading tourist destination, receiving over 89 million foreign visitors in 2018. France is a developed country with the world's seventh largest economy by nominal GDP and tenth largest by PPP in terms of aggregate household wealth. It ranks fourth in the world. France performs well in international rankings of education, health care, life expectancy, and human development. It remains a great power in global affairs, being one of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council and an official nuclear weapon state. France is a founding and leading member of the European Union and the Eurozone as well as a key member of the Group of Seven, North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD and La Francophonie. Etymology and Pronunciation Originally applied to the whole Frankish Empire, the name France comes from the Latin Francia or realm of the Franks. Modern France is still named today Francia in Italian and Spanish, while Frankreich in German. Frankreich in Dutch and Frankreich in Swedish all mean land slash realm of the Franks. The name of the Franks is related to the English word Frank Free. The latter stems from the old French Frank Free, noble, sincere, ultimately from medieval Latin Francus Free, exempt from service, Freeman, Frank, a generalization of the tribal name that emerged as a late Latin borrowing of the reconstructed Frankish endonym asterisk Frank. It has been suggested that the meaning free was adopted because, after the conquest of Gaul, only Franks were free of taxation, or more generally because they had the status of freemen in contrast to servants or slaves. The etymology of asterisk Frank is uncertain. It is traditionally derived from the Proto-Germanic word asterisk Franken, which translates as javelin or lance the throwing axe of the Franks, was known as the Francisca, although these weapons may have been named because of their use by the Franks, not the other way around. In English, France is pronounced France in American English and France or France in British English. The pronunciation with is mostly confined to accents with the trap bath split such as received pronunciation, though it can be also heard in some other dialects such as Cardiff English, in which is in free variation with History Prehistory before the 6th century BC, the oldest traces of human life in what is now France date from approximately 1.8 million years ago. Over the ensuing millennia, humans were confronted by a harsh and variable climate marked by several glacial periods. Early hominids led a nomadic hunter-gatherer life. France has a large number of decorated caves from the Upper Paleolithic era, including one of the most famous and best preserved, Lascaux, approximately 18,000 BC. At the end of the last glacial period, 10,000 BC, the climate became milder. From approximately 7,000 BC, this part of Western Europe entered the Neolithic era and its inhabitants became sedentary. After strong demographic and agricultural development between the 4th and 3rd millennia, Metallurgy appeared at the end of the third millennium, initially working gold, copper and bronze, as well as later iron. France has numerous megalithic sites from the Neolithic period, including the exceptionally dense Karnak Stones site approximately 3,300 B.C. Antiquity 6th century B.C. 5th century A.D. In 600 B.C., Ionian Greeks from Phrygia founded the colony of Massalia, present-day Marseille, on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. This makes it France's oldest city. At the same time, 
some Gallic Celtic tribes penetrated parts of eastern and northern France, gradually spreading through the rest of the country between the 5th and 3rd century BC. The concept of Gaul emerged during this period, corresponding to the territories of Celtic settlement ranging between the Rhine, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pyrenees, and the Mediterranean. The borders of modern France roughly correspond to ancient Gaul, which was inhabited by Celtic Gauls. Gaul was then a prosperous country, of which the southernmost part was heavily subject to Greek and Roman cultural and economic influences. Around 390 BC, the Gallic chieftain Brennus and his troops made their way to Italy through the Alps, defeated the Romans in the Battle of the Allia, and besieged and ransomed Rome. The Gallic invasion left Rome weakened, and the Gauls continued to harass the region until 345 BC, when they entered into a formal peace treaty with Rome. But the Romans and the Gauls would remain adversaries for the next centuries, and the Gauls would continue to be a threat in Italy. Around 125 BC, the south of Gaul was conquered by the Romans, who called this region Provincia Nostra our province, which over time evolved into the name Provus in French. Julius Caesar conquered the remainder of Gaul and overcame a revolt carried out by the Gallic chieftain Vercingetorix in 52 BC. Gaul was divided by Augustus into Roman provinces. Many cities were founded during the Gallo-Roman period, including Ludgen and present-day Lyon, which is considered the capital of the Gauls. These cities were built in traditional Roman style, with a forum, a theater, a circus, an amphitheater, and thermal baths. The Gauls mixed with Roman settlers and eventually adopted Roman culture and Roman speech Latin, from which the French language evolved. Roman polytheists emerged with Gallic paganism into the same syncretism. From the 250s to the 280s AD, Roman Gaul suffered a serious crisis, with its fortified borders being attacked on several occasions by barbarians. Nevertheless, the situation improved in the first half of the 4th century, which was a period of revival and prosperity for Roman Gaul. In 312, Emperor Constantine I converted to Christianity. Subsequently, Christians, who had been persecuted until then, increased rapidly across the entire Roman Empire. But, from the beginning of the 5th century, the barbarian invasions resumed. Teutonic tribes invaded the region from present-day Germany, the Visigoths settling in the southwest, the Burgundians along the Rhine River Valley, and the Franks from whom the French take their name in the north. Early Middle Ages, 5th-10th century, at the end of the Antiquity period, ancient Gaul was divided into several Germanic kingdoms and a remaining Gallo-Roman territory, known as the Kingdom of Siagrius. Simultaneously, Celtic Britons, fleeing the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Britain, settled in the western part of Armorica. As a result, the Armorican Peninsula was renamed Brittany. Celtic culture was revived and independent petty kingdoms arose in this region. The first leader to make himself king of all the Franks was Clovis I, who began his reign in 481, routing the last forces of the Roman governors of the province in 486. Clovis claimed that he would be baptized a Christian in the event of his victory against the Visigoths, which was said to have guaranteed the battle. Clovis regained the southwest from the Visigoths, was baptized in 508, and made himself master of what is now western Germany. Clovis I was the first Germanic conqueror after the fall of the Roman Empire to convert to Catholic Christianity rather than Arianism, thus France was given the title eldest daughter of the Church French, La Philaine de l'Église by the papacy, and French kings would be called the most Christian kings of France Rex Christianissimus. The Franks embraced the Christian Gallo-Roman culture and ancient Gaul, was eventually renamed Francia land of the Franks. The Germanic Franks adopted Romanic languages, except in northern Gaul where Roman settlements were less dense and where Germanic languages emerged. 
Clovis made Paris his capital and established the Merovingian dynasty, but his kingdom would not survive his death. The Franks treated land purely as a private possession and divided it among their heirs, so four kingdoms emerged from that of Clovis, Paris, Orleans, Soissons, and Rheims. The last Merovingian kings lost power to their mayors of the palace head of household. One mayor of the palace, Charles Martel, defeated a new Mayette invasion of Gaul at the Battle of Tours 732 and earned respect and power within the Frankish kingdoms. A son, Pepin the Short, seized the crown of Francia from the weakened Merovingians and founded the Carolingian dynasty. Pepin's son, Charlemagne, reunited the Frankish kingdoms and built a vast empire across Western and Central Europe. Proclaimed Holy Roman Emperor by Pope Leo Roman III, and thus establishing in earnest the French government's long-time historical association with the Catholic Church, Charlemagne tried to revive the Western Roman Empire and its cultural grandeur. Charlemagne's son, Louis I, Emperor 814 minus 840, kept the empire united. However, this Carolingian empire would not survive his death. In 843, under the Treaty of Verdun, the empire was divided between Louis three sons, with East Francia going to Louis the German, Middle Francia to La Terai, and West Francia to Charles the Bald. West Francia approximated the area occupied by and was the precursor to modern France. During the 9th and 10th centuries, continually threatened by Viking invasions, France became a very decentralized state, the nobility's titles and lands became hereditary, and the authority of the king became more religious than secular and thus was less effective and constantly challenged by powerful noblemen. Thus was established feudalism in France. Over time, some of the king's vassals would grow so powerful that they often posed a threat to the king. For example, after the Battle of Hastings in 1066, William the Conqueror added King of England to his titles, becoming both the vassal to his Duke of Normandy and the equal of his King of England, the King of France, creating recurring tensions. High and Late Middle Ages, 10th-15th century. The Carolingian dynasty ruled France until 987, when Hugh Capet, Duke of France and Count of Paris, was crowned King of the Franks. His descendants of the Capetians, the House of Valois and the House of Bourbon progressively unified the country through wars and dynastic inheritance into the Kingdom of France, which was fully declared in 1190 by Philip Roman II of France, Philip August. Later kings would expand their directly possessed domain royal to cover over half of modern continental France by the 15th century, including most of the north, center and west of France. During this process, the royal authority became more and more assertive, centered on a hierarchically conceived society distinguishing nobility, clergy, and commoners. The French nobility played a prominent role in most crusades to restore Christian access to the Holy Land. French knights made up the bulk of the steady flow of reinforcements throughout the 200-year span of the Crusades, in such a fashion that the Arabs uniformly referred to the Crusaders as French caring little whether they came from France. The French Crusaders also imported the French language into the Levant, making French the base of the lingua franca lit. Frankish language of the Crusader states. French knights also made up the majority in both the hospital and the temple orders. The latter, in particular, held numerous properties throughout France and by the 13th century were the principal bankers for the French crown until Philip Roman IV annihilated the order in 1307. The Albigensian Crusade was launched in 1209 to eliminate the heretical Cathars in the southwestern area of modern-day France. In the end, the Cathars were exterminated and the autonomous county of Toulouse was annexed into the crown lands of France. From the 11th century, the House of Plantagenet, the rulers of the county of Anjou, 
succeeded in establishing its dominion over the surrounding provinces of Maine and Turin, then progressively built an empire that spanned from England to the Pyrenees and covering half of modern France. Tensions between the Kingdom of France and the Plantagenet Empire would last a hundred years until Philip Roman II of France conquered, between 1202 and 1214, most of the continental possessions of the empire, leaving England and Aquitaine to the Plantagenets. Charles Roman IV the Fair died without an heir in 1328. Under Salic law the crown of France could not pass to a woman, nor could the line of kinship pass through the female line. Accordingly, the crown passed to Philip of Valois, rather than through the female line to Edward of Plantagenet, who would soon become Edward Roman III of England. During the reign of Philip of Valois, the French monarchy reached the height of its medieval power. However, Philip's seat on the throne was contested by Edward Roman III of England in 1337, and England and France entered the off and on Hundred Years' War. The exact boundaries changed greatly with time, but land holdings inside France by the English kings remained extensive for decades. With charismatic leaders, such as Joan of Arc and La Hire, strong French counterattacks won back most English continental territories. Like the rest of Europe, France was struck by the Black Death due to which half of the 17 million population of France died. Early Modern Period, 15th Century Reminis, 1789 the French Renaissance saw spectacular cultural development and the first standardization of the French language, which would become the official language of France and the language of Europe's aristocracy. It also saw a long set of wars, known as the Italian Wars, between France and the House of Habsburg. French explorers, such as Jacques Cartier or Samuel de Champlain, claimed lands in the Americas for France, paving the way for the expansion of the first French colonial empire. The rise of Protestantism in Europe led France to a civil war known as the French Wars of Religion, where, in the most notorious incident, thousands of Huguenots were murdered in the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572. The Wars of Religion were ended by Henry Roman IV's Edict of Nantes, which granted some freedom of religion to the Huguenots. Spanish troops, the terror of Western Europe, assisted the Catholic side during the wars of religion in 1589-1594 and invaded northern France in 1597 after some skirmishing in the 1620s and 1630s. Spain and France returned to all-out war between 1635 and 1659. The war cost France 300,000 casualties. Under Louis Roman XIII, the energetic Cardinal Richelieu promoted the centralization of the state and reinforced the royal power by disarming domestic power holders in the 1620s. He systematically destroyed castles of defiant lords and denounced the use of private violence, dueling, carrying weapons, and maintaining private armies. By the end of the 1620s, Richelieu established the royal monopoly of force as the doctrine. During Louis Roman XIV's minority and the regency of Queen Anne and Cardinal Mazarin, a period of trouble known as the Fraud occurred in France. This rebellion was driven by the great feudal lords and sovereign courts as a reaction to the rise of royal absolute power in France. The monarchy reached its peak during the 17th century and the reign of Louis Roman, 1416-43 minus 1715. By turning powerful feudal lords into courtiers at the Palace of Versailles, military integrated command unchallenged. Remember for his numerous wars, he made France the leading European power. France became the most populous country in Europe and had tremendous influence over European politics, economy, and culture. French became the most used language in diplomacy, science, literature and international affairs and remained so until the 20th century. France obtained many overseas possessions in the Americas, Africa and Asia. Louis Roman XIV also revoked the Edict of Nantes, 
forcing thousands of Huguenots into exile. Under the wars of Louis Roman 15 R. 17 15 minus 1774, France lost New France and most of its Indian possessions after its defeat in the Seven Years' War 1756 minus 1763. Its European territory kept growing, however, with notable acquisitions such as Lorraine 1766 and Corsica 1770. An unpopular king, Louis Roman XV's weak rule, his ill-advised financial, political, and military decisions, as well as the debauchery of his court discredited the monarchy, which arguably paved the way for the French Revolution fifteen years after his death. Louis Roman XVI R. 1774-1793, actively supported the Americans with money, fleets, and armies, helping them win independence from Great Britain. France gained revenge but spent so heavily that the government verged on bankruptcy, a factor that contributed to the French Revolution. Some of the Enlightenment occurred in French intellectual circles, and major scientific breakthroughs and inventions, such as the discovery of oxygen 1778 and the first hot air balloon carrying passengers 1783, were achieved by French scientists. French explorers, such as Bougainville and Lapeyrouse, took part in the voyages of scientific exploration through maritime expeditions around the globe. The Enlightenment philosophy in which reason is advocated as the primary source of legitimacy, undermined the power of and support for the monarchy and also was a factor in the French Revolution. Revolutionary France, 1789-1799 Facing financial troubles, King Louis Roman XVI summoned the Estates General gathering the three estates of the realm in May 1789 to propose solutions to his government. As it came to an impasse, the representatives of the Third Estate formed a national assembly, signaling the outbreak of the French Revolution. Fearing that the king would suppress the newly created national assembly, insurgents stormed the Bastille on 14 July 1789, a date which would become France's National Day. In early August 1789, the National Constituent Assembly abolished the privileges of the nobility such as personal serfdom and exclusive hunting rights. Through the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, 27 August 1789, France established fundamental rights for men. The Declaration affirms the natural and imprescriptible rights of man to liberty, property, security, and resistance to oppression. Freedom of speech and press were declared, and arbitrary arrests were outlawed. It called for the destruction of aristocratic privileges, and proclaimed freedom and equal rights for all men, as well as access to public office based on talent rather than birth. In November 1789, the Assembly decided to nationalize and sell all property of the Catholic Church, which had been the largest landowner in the country. In July 1790, a civil constitution of the clergy reorganized the French Catholic Church, cancelling the authority of the Church to levy taxes, etc. This fueled much discontent in parts of France, which would contribute to the civil war breaking out some years later. While King Louis Roman XVI still enjoyed popularity among the population, his disastrous flight to Varennes, June 1791, seemed to justify rumors he had tied his hopes of political salvation to the prospects of foreign invasion. His credibility was so deeply undermined that the abolition of the monarchy and the establishment of a republic became an increasing possibility. In August 1791, the Emperor of Austria and the King of Prussia, in the declaration of Pelnitz, threatened revolutionary France to intervene by force of arms to restore the French absolute monarchy. In September 1791, the National Constituent Assembly forced King Louis Roman XVI to accept the French Constitution of 1791, thus turning the French absolute monarchy into a constitutional monarchy. 
in the newly established Legislative Assembly October 1791, enmity developed and deepened between a group later called the Girondins, who favored war with Austria and Prussia, and a group later called Montagnards, or Jacobins, who opposed such a war. A majority in the Assembly in 1790 two however saw a war with austria and prussia as a chance to boost the popularity of the revolutionary government and thought that france would win a war against those gathered monarchy on twenty april seventeen ninety two therefore they declared war on austria on ten august seventeen ninety two an angry crowd threatened the palace of king louis roman sixteen who took refuge in the legislative assembly a Prussian army invaded France later in August 1792. In early September, Parisians, infuriated by the Prussian army capturing Verdun and counter-revolutionary uprisings in the west of France, murdered between 1,000 and 1,500 prisoners by raiding the Parisian prisons. The Assembly and the Paris City Council seemed unable to stop that bludgeon. The National Convention chosen in the first elections under male universal suffrage on 20 september 1790 two succeeded the legislative assembly and on 21 september abolished the monarchy by proclaiming the french first republic ex-king louis roman 16 was convicted of treason and guillotined in january 1793 france had declared war on great britain and the dutch republic in november 1792 and did the same on Spain in March 1793, in the spring of 1793, Austria and Prussia invaded France in March. France created a sister republic in the Republic of Mainz and kept it under control. Also in March 1793, the civil war of the Vendée against Paris started, evoked by both the civil constitution of the clergy of 1790 and the nationwide army conscription in early 1793. Elsewhere in France, rebellion was brewing too. A factionalist feud in the National Convention, smoldering ever since October 1791, came to a climax with the group of the Girondins on 2 June 1793 being forced to resign and leave the convention. The counter-revolution, begun in March 1793 in the Vendée, by July had spread to Brittany, Normandy, Bordeaux, Marseilles, Toulon, and Lyon. Paris Convention government between October and December 1793, with brutal measures managed, to subdue most internal uprisings at the cost of tens of thousands of lives. Some historians consider the civil war to have lasted until 1796 with a toll of possibly 450,000 lives. By the end of 1793, the Allies had been driven from France. France in February 1794 abolished slavery in its American colonies, but would reintroduce it later. Political disagreements and enmity in the National Convention between October 1793 and July 1794 reached unprecedented levels, leading to dozens of convention members being sentenced to death and guillotined. Meanwhile, France's external wars in 1794 were prospering, for example in Belgium. In 1795, the government seemed to return to indifference towards the desires and needs of the lower classes concerning freedom of Catholic religion and fair distribution of food. Until 1799, politicians, apart from inventing a new parliamentary system, the Directory, busied themselves with dissuading the people from Catholicism and royalism. Napoleon and 19th century 1799 minus 1914. Napoleon Bonaparte seized control of the Republic in 1799, becoming first consul and later emperor of the French Empire 1804 minus 1814, 1815. As a continuation of the wars sparked by the European monarchies against the French Republic, changing sets of European coalitions declared wars on Napoleon's empire. His armies conquered most of continental Europe with swift victories such as the battles of Gina Orstadt or Austerlitz. 
Members of the Bonaparte family were appointed as monarchs in some of the newly established kingdoms. These victories led to the worldwide expansion of French revolutionary ideals and reforms, such as the metric system, the Napoleonic Code, and the Declaration of the Rights of Man. In June 1812, Napoleon attacked Russia, reaching Moscow. Thereafter, his army disintegrated through supply problems, disease, Russian attacks, and finally winter. After the catastrophic Russian campaign and the ensuing uprising of European monarchies against his rule, Napoleon was defeated and the Bourbon monarchy restored. About a million Frenchmen died during the Napoleonic Wars. After his brief return from exile, Napoleon was finally defeated in 1815 at the Battle of Waterloo. The monarchy was re-established 1815 minus 1830 with new constitutional limitations. The discredited Bourbon dynasty was overthrown by the July Revolution of 1830, which established the constitutional July monarchy. In that year, French troops began the conquest of Algeria, establishing the first colonial presence in Africa since Napoleon's abortive invasion of Egypt in 1798. In 1848, general unrest led to the February Revolution and the end of the July monarchy. The abolition of slavery and the introduction of male universal suffrage, which were briefly enacted during the French Revolution, was re-enacted in 1848. In 1852, the president of the French Republic, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleonized nephew, was proclaimed emperor of the Second Empire as Napoleon Roman III. He multiplied French interventions abroad, especially in Crimea, Mexico, and Italy, which resulted in the annexation of the Duchy of Savoy and the County of Nice, then part of the Kingdom of Sardinia. Napoleon Roman III, was unseated following defeat in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 and his regime was replaced by the Third Republic. By 1875, the French conquest of Algeria was complete and approximately 825,000 Algerians had been killed from famine, disease, and violence. France had colonial possessions in various forms since the beginning of the 17th century but in the 19th and 20th centuries, its global overseas colonial empire extended greatly and became the second largest in the world behind the British Empire. Including metropolitan France, the total area of land under French sovereignty almost reached 13 million square kilometers in the 1920s and 1930s, 8.6 percent of the world's land. Known as the Belle Epoque, the turn of the century was a period characterized by optimism, regional peace, economic prosperity, and technological, scientific, and cultural innovations. In 1905, state secularism was officially established. Early to mid-20th century, 1914-1946, France was invaded by Germany and defended by great Britain to start World War I in August 1914. A rich industrial area in the Northeast was occupied. France and the Allies emerged victorious against the Central Powers at a tremendous human and material cost. World War I left 1.4 million French soldiers dead, 4% of its population. Between 27 and 30 percent of soldiers conscripted from 1912 to 1915 were killed. The interbellum years were marked by intense international tensions and a variety of social reforms introduced by the Popular Front Government annual leave, eight-hour workdays, women in government. In 1940, France was invaded and quickly defeated by Nazi Germany. France was divided into a German occupation zone in the north, an Italian occupation zone in the southeast, and an unoccupied territory, the rest of France, which consisted of the southern French metropolitan territory, two-fifths of pre-war metropolitan France and the French Empire, which included the two protectorates of French Tunisia and French Morocco, and French Algeria, the Vichy government, a newly established authoritarian regime collaborating with Germany ruled the unoccupied territory. Free France, 
The government in exile, led by Charles de Gaulle, was set up in London. From 1942 to 1944, about 160,000 French citizens, including around 75,000 Jews, were deported to death camps and concentration camps in Germany and occupied Poland. In September 1943, Corsica was the first French metropolitan territory to liberate itself from the Axis. On 6 June 1944, the Allies invaded Normandy and in August they invaded Provence. Over the following year, the Allies and the French resistance emerged victorious over the Axis powers and French sovereignty was restored with the establishment of the Provisional Government of the French Republic GPRF. This interim government, established by de Gaulle, aimed to continue to wage war against Germany and to purge collaborators from office. It also made several important reforms suffrage extended to women, the creation of a social security system. Contemporary period 1946-present. The GPRF laid the groundwork for a new constitutional order that resulted in the Fourth Republic 1946-1958, which saw spectacular economic growth less trend glory uses. France was one of the founding members of NATO 1949. France attempted to regain control of French Indochina, but was defeated by the Viet Minh in 1954 at the climactic Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Only months later, France faced another anti-colonialist conflict in Algeria, then treated as an integral part of France and home to over one million European settlers. During the conflict, the French systematically used torture and repression, including extrajudicial killings, to keep control of Algeria. This conflict racked the country and nearly led to a coup and civil war in France. During the May 1958 crisis, the weak and unstable Fourth Republic gave way to the Fifth Republic, which included a strengthened presidency. In the latter role, Charles de Gaulle managed to keep the country together while taking steps to end the Algerian War. The war was concluded with the Avene Accords in 1962, which led to Algerian independence. Algerian independence came at a high price. It resulted in between half a million and one million deaths, and over two million internally displaced Algerians. Around one million Pied Noirs and Harkis fled from Algeria to France upon independence. A vestige of the colonial empire are the French overseas departments and territories. In the context of the Cold War, de Gaulle pursued a policy of national independence towards the Western and Eastern blocs. To this end, he withdrew from NATO's military integrated command while remaining in the NATO alliance itself, launched a nuclear development program, and made France the fourth nuclear power. He restored cordial Franco-German relations to create a European counterweight between the American and Soviet spheres of influence. However, he opposed any development of a supranational Europe, favoring a Europe of sovereign nations. In the wake of the series of worldwide protests of 1968, the revolt of May 1968 had an enormous social impact. In France, it was a watershed moment when a conservative moral ideal religion, patriotism, respect for authority shifted towards a more liberal moral ideal secularism, individualism, sexual revolution. Although the revolt was a political failure as the Gaullist party emerged even stronger than before it announced a split between the French people and de Gaulle, who resigned shortly after. In the post-Gaullist era, France remained one of the most developed economies in the world, but faced several economic crises that resulted in high unemployment rates and increasing public debt. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, France has been at the forefront of the development of a supranational European Union, notably by signing the Maastricht Treaty which created the European Union in 1992, establishing the Eurozone in 1999 and signing the Lisbon Treaty in 2007. France 
has also gradually but fully reintegrated into NATO and has since participated in most NATO-sponsored wars. Since the 19th century, France has received many immigrants. These have been mostly male foreign workers from European Catholic countries who generally returned home when not employed. During the 1970s, France faced an economic crisis and allowed new immigrants mostly from the Maghreb to permanently settle in France with their families and acquire French citizenship. It resulted in hundreds of thousands of Muslims, especially in the larger cities, living in subsidized public housing and suffering from very high unemployment rates. Simultaneously, France renounced the assimilation of immigrants, where they were expected to adhere to French traditional values and cultural norms. They were encouraged to retain their distinctive cultures and traditions and required merely to integrate. Since the 1995 Paris Metro and RER bombings, France has been sporadically targeted by Islamist organizations, notably the Charlie Hebdo attack in January 2015, which provoked the largest public rallies in French history, gathering 4.4 million people, the November 2015 Paris attacks, which resulted in 130 deaths, the deadliest attack on French soil since World War Roman II, and the deadliest in the European Union since the Madrid train bombings in 2004, as well as the 2016 Nice truck attack, which caused 87 deaths during Bastille Day celebrations. Operation Chamel, France's military efforts to contain ISIS, killed over 1,000 ISIS troops between 2014 and 2015. Geography Location and borders. The vast majority of France's territory and population is situated in Western Europe and is called metropolitan France to distinguish it from the country's various overseas polities. It is bordered by the North Sea in the north, the English Channel in the northwest, the Atlantic Ocean in the west, and the Mediterranean Sea in the southeast. Its land borders consist of Belgium and Luxembourg in the northeast, Germany and Switzerland in the east, Italy and Monaco in the southeast, and Andorra and Spain in the south and southwest. Except for the northeast, most of France's land borders are roughly delineated by natural boundaries and geographic features to the south and southeast, the Pyrenees and the Alps and the Jura, respectively, and to the east, the Rhine River. Due to its shape, France is often referred to as El Hexagon the Hexagon. Metropolitan France includes various coastal islands, of which the largest is Corsica. Metropolitan France is situated mostly between latitudes 41 degrees and 51 degrees N and longitudes 6 degrees W and 10 degrees E on the western edge of Europe and thus lies within the northern temperate zone. Its continental part covers about 1,000 km from north to south and from east to west. France has several overseas regions across the world which are organized as follows. Five have the same status as mainland France's regions and departments, French Guiana in South America, Guadeloupe in the Caribbean, Martinique in the Caribbean, Mayat in the Indian Ocean off the coast of East Africa, Reunion in the Indian Ocean off the coast of East Africa. Nine have special legal status distinct from mainland France's regions and departments in the Atlantic Ocean, St. Pierre and Miquelon and in the Antilles, St. Martin and St. Barthélemy. In the Pacific Ocean, French Polynesia, the special collectivity of New Caledonia, Wallis and Futuna and Clipperton Island. In the Indian Ocean, the Kerguelen Islands, Croset Islands, St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands and the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean in the Antarctic, a daily land. France has land borders with Brazil and Suriname via French Guiana and with the Kingdom of the Netherlands, through the French portion of St. Martin. Metropolitan, France covers 550, 1,500 square kilometers, 212,935 sq mi, the largest among European Union members. France's total land area, 
with its overseas departments and territories excluding a daily land is 643,801 km2, 248,573 sq mi, 0.45% of the total land area on Earth. France possesses a wide variety of landscapes, from coastal plains in the north and west to mountain ranges of the Alps in the southeast the massive central in the south central and Pyrenees in the southwest. Due to its numerous overseas departments and territories scattered across the planet, France possesses the second largest exclusive economic zone EZ in the world, covering 11,035,000 km to 4 million. 261,000 SQ MI just behind the EEZ of the United States, which covers 11,351,000 km to 4,383,000 SQ MI, but ahead of the EEZ of Australia, which covers 8,148,250 km to 3,146,000 SQ MI. Its EEZ covers approximately 8% of the total surface of all the EEZ of the world. Geology, Topography and Hydrography Metropolitan France has a wide variety of topographical sets and natural landscapes. Large parts of the current territory of France were raised during several tectonic episodes like the Hercynian uplift in the Paleozoic era, during which the Armorican Massive the Massif Central, the Morvan, the Vosges and Ardennes Ranges, and the island of Corsica were formed. These massifs still in eat several sedimentary basins such as the Aquitaine Basin in the southwest and the Paris Basin in the north, the latter including several areas of particularly fertile ground such as the silt beds of Beauce and Brie. Various routes of natural passage, such as the Rhone Valley, allow easy communication. The Alpine Pyrenean and Jura mountains are much younger and have less eroded forms. At 4,810.45 meters, 15,782 ft above sea level, Mont Blanc, located in the Alps on the French and Italian border, is the highest point in Western Europe. Although 60% of municipalities are classified as having seismic risks, these risks remain moderate. The coastlines offer contrasting landscapes, mountain ranges along the French Riviera, coastal cliffs such as the Côte d'Albatter, and wide sandy plains in the Languedoc. Corsica lies off the Mediterranean coast. France has an extensive river system consisting of the four major rivers Seine, the Loire, the Garonne, the Rhône and their tributaries, whose combined catchment includes over 62% of the metropolitan territory. The Rhone divides the massive central from the Alps and flows into the Mediterranean Sea at the Camar. The Garonne meets the Dordogne just after Bordeaux, forming the Gironde estuary, the largest estuary in Western Europe, which after approximately 100 kilometers 62 mi empties into the Atlantic Ocean. Other water courses drain towards the Meuse and Rhine along the northeastern borders. France has 11 million square kilometers, 4.2 times 10.6 sq mi of marine waters within three oceans under its jurisdiction, of which 97% are overseas. Environment. France was one of the first countries to create an environment ministry in 1971. Although it is one of the most industrialized countries in the world, France is ranked only 19th by carbon dioxide emissions, behind less populous nations such as Canada or Australia. This is due to the country's heavy investment in nuclear power following the 1973 oil crisis, which now accounts for 75% of its electricity production and results in less pollution. According to the 2020 Environmental Performance Index conducted by Yale and Columbia, France was the fifth most environmentally conscious country in the world behind the United Kingdom. Like all European Union state members, France agreed to cut carbon emissions by at least 20% of 1990 levels by 2020, compared to the United States' plan to reduce emissions by 4% of 1990 levels. As of 2009, 
French carbon dioxide emissions per capita were lower than that of China. The country was set to impose a carbon tax in 2009 at 17 euros per ton of carbon emitted, which would have raised 4 billion euros of revenue annually. However, the plan was abandoned due to fears of burdening French businesses. Forests account for 31% of France's land area, the fourth highest proportion in Europe, representing an increase of 7% since 1990. French forests are some of the most diverse in Europe, comprising more than 140 species of trees. France had a 2018 Forest Landscape Integrity Index mean score of 4.52-10, ranking it 123rd globally out of 172 countries. There are nine national parks and 46 natural parks in France, with the government planning to convert 20% of its exclusive economic zone into a marine protected area by 2020. A regional nature park, French Parc Natural Regional or PNR, is a public establishment in France between local authorities and the national government covering an inhabited rural area of outstanding beauty to protect the scenery and heritage as well as setting up sustainable economic development in the area. A PNR sets goals and guidelines for managed human habitation, sustainable economic development and protection of the natural environment based on each park's unique landscape and heritage. The parks foster ecological research programs and public education in the natural sciences. As of 2019, there are 54 PNR in France. Administrative Divisions the French Republic is divided into 18 regions located in Europe and overseas, five overseas collectivities, one overseas territory, one special collectivity New Caledonia, and one uninhabited island directly under the authority of the Minister of Overseas France Clipperton. Regions. Since 2016, France is mainly divided into 18 administrative regions, 13 regions in metropolitan France, including the territorial collectivity of Corsica, and five located overseas. The regions are further subdivided into 101 departments, which are numbered mainly alphabetically. This number is used in postal codes and was formerly used on French vehicle number plates. Among the 101 departments of France, five French Guiana, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Mayotte, and Reunion are in overseas regions ROM that are also simultaneously overseas departments. DOMS enjoy the same status as metropolitan departments and are an integral part of the European Union. The 101 departments are subdivided into 335 arrondissements, which are in turn subdivided into 2054 cantons. These cantons are then divided into 36,658 communes, which are municipalities with an elected municipal council. Three communes, Paris, Lyon, and Marseille, are subdivided into 45 municipal arrondissements. The regions, departments, and communes are all known as territorial collectivities, meaning they possess local assemblies as well as an executive. Arrondissements and cantons are merely administrative divisions. However, this was not always the case. Until 1940, the arrondissements were territorial collectivities with an elected assembly, but these were suspended by the Vichy regime and abolished by the Fourth Republic in 1946. Overseas Territories and Collectivities In addition to the 18 regions and 101 departments, the French Republic has five overseas collectivities, French Polynesia, Saint Barthélemy, Saint Martin, Saint Pierre and Miquelon, and Wallis and Futuna, one sui generis collectivity New Caledonia, one overseas territory French Southern and Antarctic lands, and one island possession in the Pacific Ocean Clipperton Island. Overseas collectivities and territories form part of the French Republic, but do not form part of the European Union or its fiscal area, except for St. Bartholomew, which seceded from Guadeloupe in 2007. The Pacific Collectivities, COM of French Polynesia, Wallis and Futuna, and New Caledonia continue to use the CFP franc, whose value is strictly linked 
to that of the euro. In contrast, the five overseas regions use the French franc and now use the euro. Government and politics. Government. France is a representative democracy organized as a unitary, semi-presidential republic. As one of the earliest republics of the modern world, democratic traditions and values are deeply rooted in French culture, identity, and politics. The Constitution of the Fifth Republic was approved by referendum on 28 September 1958, establishing a framework consisting of executive, legislative, and judicial branches. It sought to address the instability of the Third and Fourth Republics by combining elements of both parliamentary and presidential systems, whilst greatly strengthening the authority of the executive relative to the legislature. The executive branch has two leaders. The President of the Republic, currently Emmanuel Macron, is the head of state, elected directly by universal adult suffrage for a five-year term. The Prime Minister, currently Elizabeth Bourne, is the head of government, appointed by the President of the Republic to lead the government of France. The President has the power to dissolve Parliament or circumvent it by submitting referendums directly to the people. The President also appoints judges and civil servants, negotiates and ratifies international agreements, as well as serves as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. The Prime Minister determines public policy and oversees the civil service, with an emphasis on domestic matters. In the 2022 presidential election, President Macron was re-elected. The legislature consists of the French Parliament, a bicameral body comprising a lower house, the National Assembly, Assembly Nationale, and an upper house, the Senate. Legislators in the National Assembly, known as députés, represent local constituencies and are directly elected for five-year terms. The Assembly has the power to dismiss the government by majority vote. Senators are chosen by an electoral college for six-year terms, with half the seats submitted to election every three years. The Senate's legislative powers are limited in the event of disagreement between the two chambers. The National Assembly has the final say. The Parliament is responsible for determining the rules and principles concerning most areas of law, political amnesty, and fiscal policy, however, the government may draft specific details concerning most laws. Until World War Roman II, radicals were a strong political force in France, embodied by the Republican, Radical, and Radical Socialist Party, which was the most important party of the Third Republic. Since World War Roman II, they were marginalized while French politics became characterized by Two politically opposed groupings, one left-wing, centered on the French section of the Workers' International and its successor, the Socialist Party, since 1969, and the other right-wing, centered on the Gaullist Party, whose name changed over time to the Rally of the French People, 1947, the Union of Democrats for the Republic, 1958, the Rally for the Republic, 1976, the Union for a Popular Movement 2007 and the Republicans since 2015. In the 2017 presidential and legislative elections, the radical centrist party La République and March, El Rem became the dominant force, overtaking both socialists and republicans. El Rem's main opponent in both the 2017 and 2022 elections has been the growing far-right party national rally. The electorate is constitutionally empowered to vote on amendments passed by the Parliament and bills submitted by the President. Referendums have played a key role in shaping French politics and even foreign policy. Voters have decided on such matters as Algeria's independence, the election of the President by popular vote, the formation of the EU, and the reduction of presidential term limits. Waning civic participation has been a matter of vigorous public debate, with a majority of the public reportedly supporting mandatory voting as a solution in 2019. However, at the least as of 2017, voter turnout was 75% during recent elections, 
higher than the OECD average of 68%. Look, France uses a civil legal system, wherein law arises primarily from written statutes. Judges are not to make law, but merely to interpret it, though the amount of judicial interpretation in certain areas makes it equivalent to case law in a common law system. Basic principles of the rule of law were laid in the Napoleonic Code, which was, in turn, largely based on the royal law codified under Louis Roman XIV. In agreement with the principles of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, the law should only prohibit actions detrimental to society. As Guy Canavit, first president of the Court of Cassation, wrote about the management of prisons, freedom is the rule and its restriction is the exception. Any restriction of freedom must be provided for by law and must follow the principles of necessity and proportionality. That is, law should lay out prohibitions only if they are needed, and if the inconveniences caused by this restriction do not exceed the inconveniences that the prohibition is supposed to remedy. French law is divided into two principal areas, private law and public law. Private law includes, in particular, civil law and criminal law. Public law includes, in particular, administrative law and constitutional law. However, in practical terms, French law comprises three principal areas of law, civil law, criminal law, and administrative law. Criminal laws can only address the future and not the past criminal ex post facto laws are prohibited. While administrative law is often a subcategory of civil law in many countries, it is completely separated in France and each body of law is headed by a specific Supreme Court. Ordinary courts, which handle criminal and civil litigation, are headed by the Court of Cassation and administrative courts are headed by the Council of State. To be applicable, every law must be officially published in the journal Officiel de la République Française. France does not recognize religious law as a motivation for the enactment of prohibitions. It has long abolished blasphemy laws and sodomy laws, the latter in 1791. However, offenses against public decency contraires, aux, bonds, mers, or disturbing public order trouble at El Order Public have been used to repress public expressions of homosexuality or street prostitution. Since 1999, civil unions for homosexual couples are permitted, and since 2013, same-sex marriage and LGBT adoption are legal. Laws prohibiting discriminatory speech in the press are as old as 1881. Some consider hate speech laws in France to be too broad or severe, undermining freedom of speech. France has laws against racism and anti-Semitism, while the 1990 Gaysat Act prohibits Holocaust denial. Freedom of religion is constitutionally guaranteed by the 1789 Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. The 1905 French law on the separation of the churches and the state is the basis for laicite state secularism. The state does not formally recognize any religion except in Alsace Mosul. Nonetheless, it does recognize religious associations. The Parliament has listed many religious movements as dangerous cults since 1995 and has banned wearing conspicuous religious symbols in schools since 2004. In 2010, it banned the wearing of face-covering Islamic veils in public. Human rights groups such as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch described the law as discriminatory towards Muslims. However, it is supported by most of the population. Foreign Relations France is a founding member of the United Nations and serves as one of the permanent members of the UN Security Council with veto rights. In 2015, it was described as the best networked state in the world due to its membership in more international institutions than any other country, these include the G7 World Trade Organization WTO, the Pacific Community SBC, and the Indian Ocean Commission COI. It is an associate member of the Association of Caribbean States ACS and a leading member of the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie OIF of 84 French-speaking countries. As a significant hub, 
for international relations. France has the third largest assembly of diplomatic missions, second only to China and the United States, which are far more populous. It also hosts the headquarters of several international organizations, including the OECD, UNESCO, Interpol, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, and the OIF. Post-war French foreign policy has been largely shaped by membership in the European Union, of which it was a founding member. Since the 1960s, France has developed close ties with reunified Germany to become the most influential driving force of the EU. In the 1960s, France sought to exclude the British from the European unification process, seeking to build its standing in continental Europe. However, since 1904, France has maintained an entente cordiale with the United Kingdom, and there has been a strengthening of links between the countries, especially militarily. France is a member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, but under President de Gaulle excluded itself from the Joint Military Command in protest of the special relationship between the United States and Britain and to preserve the independence of French foreign and security policies. Under Nicolas Sarkozy, France rejoined the NATO Joint Military Command on 4 April 2009. France retains strong political and economic influence in its former African colonies France Afrique and has supplied economic aid and troops for peacekeeping missions in Ivory Coast and Chad. From 2012 to 2021, France and other African states intervened in support of the Malayan government in the northern Mali conflict. In 2017, France was the world's fourth largest donor of development aid in absolute terms behind the United States, Germany, and the United Kingdom. This represents 0.43% of its GMP, the 12th highest among the OECD. Aid is provided by the governmental French Development Agency, which finances primarily humanitarian projects in sub-Saharan Africa, with an emphasis on developing infrastructure, access to health care and education, the implementation of appropriate economic policies and the consolidation of the rule of law and democracy. Military The French Armed Forces, Forces Armies, Francaises are the military and paramilitary forces of France, under the President of the Republic as Supreme Commander. They consist of the French Army, Army de Terre, the French Navy Marine Nationale, formerly called Army de Mer, the French Air and Space Force Army de l'Air et de l'Espace, and the military police called National Gendarmerie Gendarmerie Nationale, which also fulfills civil police duties in the rural areas of France. Together, they are among the largest armed forces in the world and the largest in the EU. According to a 2018 study by Credit Suisse, the French armed forces are ranked as the world's sixth most powerful military and the second most powerful in Europe after Russia. France's annual military expenditure in 2018 was US$3.8 billion or 2.3% of its GDP, making it the fifth biggest military spender in the world after the United States, China, Saudi Arabia, and India. There has been no national conscription since 1997. France has been a recognized nuclear state since 1960. France has signed and ratified the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, CTBT, and acceded to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The French nuclear force, formerly known as Force de Frappe, consists of four triumphant class submarines equipped with submarine-launched ballistic missiles. In addition to the submarine fleet, it is estimated that France has about 60 S medium-range air-to-ground missiles with nuclear warheads, of which around 50 are deployed by the Air and Space Force using the Mirage 2000 and long-range nuclear strike aircraft, while around 10 are deployed by the French 80s super-attended modern SASEM attack aircraft, which operate from the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. The new Rafale F-3 aircraft will gradually replace all Mirage 2000 and an SEM in the nuclear strike role with the improved ASP missile with a nuclear warhead. France has major military industries with one of the largest aerospace industries in the world. 
Its industries have produced such equipment as the Rafale fighter, the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier, the Exocet missile, and the Leclerc tank, among others. France is actively investing in European joint projects such as the Eurocopter Tiger, multipurpose frigates, the Uke of Demonstrator and Euron, and the Airbus of 400M. France is a major arms seller, with most of its arsenal's designs available for the export market, except for the nuclear powered devices. One French intelligence unit, the Directorate General for External Security Direction Gain Aerial de la Sécurité Extérieure, is considered to be a component of the armed forces under the authority of the Ministry of Defense. The other, the Central Directorate for Interior Intelligence Direction Centrale du Renseignement Interior is a division of the National Police Force Direction Gain Aerial de la Police Nationale. France's cybersecurity capabilities are regularly ranked as some of the most robust of any nation in the world. Government Finance The government of France has run a budget deficit each year since the early 1970s. As of 2016, French government debt levels reached 2.2 trillion euros, the equivalent of 96.4% of French GDP. In late 2012, credit rating agencies warned that growing French government debt levels risked France's AA credit rating, raising the possibility of a future downgrade and subsequent higher borrowing costs for the French authorities. However, in July 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the French government issued 10-year bonds, which had negative interest rates, for the first time in its history. In 2020, France possessed the fourth largest gold reserves in the world. 1. Economy France has a developed, high-income mixed economy, characterized by sizable government involvement, economic diversity, a skilled labor force, and high innovation. For roughly two centuries, the French economy has consistently ranked among the ten largest globally, is currently the world's ninth largest by purchasing power parity, the seventh largest by nominal GDP, and the second largest in the European Union by both metrics. France is considered an economic power, with membership in the group of seven leading industrialized countries, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, and the group of 20 largest economies. France's economy is highly diversified. Services represent two-thirds of both the workforce and GDP, while the industrial sector accounts for a fifth of GDP and a similar proportion of employment. France is the third biggest manufacturing country in Europe, behind Germany and Italy, and ranks eighth in the world by share of global manufacturing output at 1.9%. Less than 2% of GDP is generated by the primary sector, namely agriculture, however. France's agricultural sector is among the largest in value and leads the EU in terms of overall production. In 2018, France was the fifth largest trading nation in the world and the second largest in Europe, with the value of exports representing over a fifth of GDP. Its membership in the Eurozone and the broader European single market facilitates access to capital, goods, services, and skilled labor. Despite protectionist policies over certain industries, particularly in agriculture, France has generally played a leading role in fostering free trade and commercial integration in Europe to enhance its economy. In 2019, it ranked first in Europe and 13th in the world in foreign direct investment, with European countries and the United States being leading sources. According to the Bank of France, the leading recipients of FDI were manufacturing, real estate, finance and insurance. The Paris region has the highest concentration of multinational firms in Europe. Under the doctrine of dirigisme, the government historically played a major role in the economy. Policies such as indicative planning and nationalization are credited for contributing to three decades of unprecedented post-war economic growth known as Trent Gloriuses. At its peak in 1982, 
the public sector accounted for one-fifth of industrial employment and over four-fifths of the credit market. Beginning in the late 20th century, France loosened regulations and state involvement in the economy, with most leading companies now being privately owned, state ownership now dominates only transportation, defense and broadcasting. Policies aimed at promoting economic dynamism and privatization have improved France's economic standing globally. It is among the world's ten most innovative countries in the 2020 Bloomberg Innovation Index and the 15th most competitive, according to the 2019 Global Competitiveness Report, up two places from 2018. According to the IMF, France ranked 30th in GDP per capita, with roughly 5,000 per inhabitant. It placed 23rd on the Human Development Index, indicating very high human development. Public corruption is among the lowest in the world, with France consistently ranking among the 30 least corrupt countries since the Corruption Perceptions Index began in 2012. It placed 22nd in 2021, up one place from the previous year. France is Europe's second largest spender in research and development, at over 2% of GDP globally it ranks 12th. Financial services, banking, and insurance are important part of the economy. AXA is the world's second largest insurance company by total non-banking assets in 2020. As of 2011, the three largest financial institutions cooperatively owned by their customers were French, Credit Agricole, Group Case Depardny, and Group Case Depardny. According to a 2020 report by S&P Global Market Intelligent, France's leading banks, BNP Paribas and Credit Agricole, are among the top world's ten largest bank I assets with Société Gainerail and Group BPC ranking 17th and 19th globally, respectively. The Paris Stock Exchange French, La Bourse de Paris, is one of the oldest in the world, created by Louis Roman 15 in 1724. In 2000, it merged with counterparts in Amsterdam and Brussels to form Euronext, which in 2007 merged with the New York Stock Exchange to form NYSE Euronext, the world's largest stock exchange. Euronext Paris, the French branch of NYSE Euronext, is Europe's second largest stock exchange market, behind the London Stock Exchange. Agriculture France has historically been one of the world's major agricultural centers and remains a global agricultural powerhouse. Nicknamed the Granary of the Old Continent, over half its total land area is farmland, of which 45% is devoted to permanent field crops such as cereals. The country's diverse climate, extensive arable land, modern farming technology, and EU subsidies have made it Europe's leading agricultural producer and exporter. It accounts for one-fifth of the EU agricultural production, including and over one-third of its oil seeds, cereals, and wine. As of 2017, France ranked first in Europe in beef and cereals, second in dairy and aquaculture, and third in poultry fruits, vegetables, and manufactured chocolate products. France has the EU largest cattle herd at 18 minus 19 million. France is the world's sixth biggest exporter of agricultural products, generating a trade surplus of over euros 7.4 billion. Its primary agricultural exports are wheat, poultry, dairy, beef, pork, and internationally recognized brands, particularly beverages. France is the fifth largest grower of wheat, after China, India, Russia, and the United States, all of which are significantly larger. It is the world's top exporter of natural spring water, flax, malt, and potatoes. In 2020, France exported over euros 61 billion in agricultural products, compared to euros 37 billion in 2000. France was an early center of viviculture, dating back to at least the 6th century BCE. It is the world's second largest producer of wine, with many varieties enjoying global renown, 
such as Champagne and Bordeaux, domestic consumption is also high, particularly of Rousset. France produces rum primarily from overseas territories such as Martinique, Guadeloupe, and La Réunion. Relative to other developed countries, agriculture is an important sector of France's economy. 3.8% of the active population is employed in agriculture, whereas the total agri-food industry made up 4.2% of the French GDP in 2005. France remains the largest recipient of EU agricultural subsidies, receiving an annual average of euros 8 billion from 2007 to 2019. Tourism. With 89 million international tourist arrivals in 2018, France is the world's top tourist destination, head of Spain 83 million and the United States 80 million. However, it ranks third in tourism-derived income due to the shorter duration of visits. The most popular tourist sites include annual visitors, Eiffel Tower 6.2 million, Chateau de Versailles 2.8 million, Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle 2 million, Pont du Gard 1.5 million, Arc de Triomphe 1.2 million, Mont saint Michel 1 million, Saint Chapel 683,000, Chez Tihau du Haut Connexburg 549,000, Pai de Dome 500,000, Musi Picasso 441,000, and Carcassonne 362,000. Paris Region France, especially Paris, has some of the world's largest and most renowned museums, including the Louvre, which is the most visited art museum in the world, 5.7 million, the Musée d'Orsay, 2.1 million, mostly devoted to Impressionism, the Musée de l'Orangerie, 1.2 million, which is home to eight large water lily murals by Claude Monet, as well as the Centre Georges Pompidou, 1.2 million, dedicated to contemporary art. Disneyland Paris is Europe's most popular theme park, with 15 million combined visitors to the resort's Disneyland Park and Walt Disney Studios Park in 2009. French Riviera With more than 10 million tourists a year, the French Riviera French Côte d'Azur in southeast France is the second leading tourist destination in the country after the Paris region. It benefits from 300 days of sunshine per year, 115 kilometers, 71 mile of coastline and beaches, 18 golf courses, 14 ski resorts, and 3,000 restaurants. Chaitox. With 6 million tourists a year, the castles of the Loire Valley French, Chaitox, and the Loire Valley itself are the third leading tourist destination in France. This World Heritage Site is noteworthy for its architectural heritage in its historic towns, but in particular its castles, such as the Chaitox, Dambois, de Chambord, de Say, de Villandry, Chenonceau, and Montsoreau. The Chateau de Chantilly, Versailles, and Vaux le Vicomte, all three located near Paris, are also visitor attractions. Other protected areas. France has 37 sites inscribed in UNESCO's World Heritage List and features cities of high cultural interest, beaches and seaside resorts, ski resorts, as well as rural regions that many enjoy for their beauty and tranquility green tourism. Small and picturesque French villages are promoted through the association Les Plus Beaux Villages de France, literally the most beautiful villages of France. The Remarkable Gardens label is a list of the over 200 gardens classified by the Ministry of Culture. This label is intended to protect and promote remarkable gardens and parks. France attracts many religious pilgrims on their way to St. James or to Lourdes, a town in the Hauts Pyrenees that hosts several million visitors a year. Energy France is the world's 10th largest producer of electricity. Electricité de France EDF, which is majority owned by the French government, is the country's main producer and distributor of electricity and one of the world's largest electric utility companies, ranking third in revenue globally. In 2018, EDF produced around one-fifth of the European Union's electricity, 
primarily from nuclear power. As of 2020, one, France was the biggest energy exporter in Europe, mostly to the UK and Italy, and the largest net exporter of electricity in the world. Since the 1973 oil crisis, France has pursued a strong policy of energy security, namely through heavy investment in nuclear energy. It is one of 32 countries with nuclear power plants, ranking second in the world by the number of operational nuclear reactors, at 56. Consequently, 70% of France's electricity is generated by nuclear power, the highest proportion in the world by a wide margin, only Slovakia, and Ukraine derive a majority of electricity from nuclear power at roughly 53% and 51%, respectively. France is considered a world leader in nuclear technology, with reactors and fuel products being major exports. Due to its overwhelming reliance on nuclear power, renewable energies have seen relatively little growth compared to other Western countries. Nevertheless, between 2008 and 2019, France's production capacity from renewable energies rose consistently and nearly doubled. Hydropower is by far the leading source, accounting for over half the country's renewable energy sources and contributing 13% of its electricity, the highest proportion in Europe after Norway and Turkey. As with nuclear power, most hydroelectric plants such as Egizen, Itang de Solsum, and Lac de Vauglins are managed by EDF. France aims to further expand hydropower into 2040. France made minimal, but measurable, investments in other renewable energy sources. Due to its geography and extensive agricultural land, it has the second-largest wind energy potential in Europe, and by 2017 had ranked 8th globally in installed wind capacity. In terms of solar power, France ranked 7th in the world in 2015 for solar photovoltaic installation capacity. As of 2019, solar power sources generated over 10,570 megawatts of electricity, compared to a little over 1,000 megawatts in 2010. Because France derives the vast majority of its power from nuclear and renewable sources, close to half its primary energy 48.5% is derived from low-carbon sources, compared to 26.4% in Europe and 15.7% in the world as a whole. France is also the smallest emitter of carbon dioxide among the G7. Transport France's railway network which stretches 29,473 kilometers, 18,314 miles of 2008, is the second most extensive in Western Europe after Germany. It is operated by the SNCF, and high-speed trains include the Thales, the Eurostar and TGV, which travels at 320 km h 199 mph. The Eurostar, along with the Eurotunnel shuttle, connects with the United Kingdom through the Channel Tunnel. Rail connections exist to all other neighboring countries in Europe except Andorra. Interurban connections are also well developed, with most major cities having underground or tramway services complementing bus services. There are approximately 1,027,183 638,262 miles of serviceable roadway in France, ranking it the most extensive network of the European continent. The Paris region is enveloped with the densest network of roads and highways, which connect it with virtually all parts of the country. French roads also handle substantial international traffic, connecting with cities in neighboring Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Spain, Andorra, and Monaco. There is no annual registration fee or road tax, however. Usage of the mostly privately owned motorways is through tolls except in the vicinity of large communes. The new car market is dominated by domestic brands such as Renault, Pugiat, and Citroën. France possesses the Milau Viaduct, 
the world's tallest bridge, and has built many important bridges such as the Pont de Normandie. Diesel and gasoline-fueled cars and lorries cause a large part of the country's air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. There are 464 airports in France. Charles de Gaulle Airport, located in the vicinity of Paris, is the largest and busiest airport in the country, handling the vast majority of popular and commercial traffic and connecting Paris with virtually all major cities across the world. Air France is the national carrier airline, although numerous private airline companies provide domestic and international travel services. There are ten major ports in France, the largest of which is in Marseille, which also is the largest bordering the Mediterranean Sea, 12,261 kilometers, 7,619 miles of waterways traverse France, including the Canal du Midi, which connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean through the Garonne River. Science and Technology Since the Middle Ages, France has been a major contributor to scientific and technological achievement. In the early 11th century, the French-born Pope Sylvester Roman II reintroduced the abacus and armillary sphere and introduced Arabic numerals and clocks to much of Europe. The University of Paris, founded in the mid-12th century, is still one of the most important academic institutions in the Western world. In the 17th century, mathematician René Descartes pioneered rationalism as a method for acquiring scientific knowledge, while Blaise Pascal became famous for his work on probability and fluid mechanics. Both were key figures of the scientific revolution, which blossomed in Europe during this period. The French Academy of Sciences, founded in the mid-17th century by Louis Roman XIV to encourage and protect French scientific research, was one of the earliest national scientific institutions in history. It was at the forefront of scientific developments in Europe for the next two centuries. The Age of Enlightenment was marked by the work of biologist Buffon, one of the first naturalists to recognize ecological succession, and chemist Lavoisier, who discovered the role of oxygen in combustion. Diderot and D'Alembert published the Encyclopédie, which aimed to give the public access to useful knowledge that could be applied to everyday life. The Industrial Revolution of the 19th century saw spectacular scientific developments in France, with Augustin Fresnel founding modern optics, Sadi Carnot laying the foundations of thermodynamics, and Louis Pasteur pioneering microbiology. Other eminent French scientists of the period have their names inscribed on the Eiffel Tower, Famous French scientists of the 20th century include the mathematician and physicist Henri Poincaré, physicists Henri Becquerel, Pierre and Marie Curie, who remain famous for their work on radioactivity, physicist Paul Langevin and virologist Luc Montagnier, co-discoverer of HIV-AIDS. Hand transplantation was developed in Lyon in 1998 by an international team that included Jean Mitchell du Bernard, who afterward performed the first successful double-hand transplant. Telesurgery was first performed by French surgeons led by Jacques Merscox on 7 September 2001 across the Atlantic Ocean. A face transplant was first done on 27 November 2005 by Dr. Bernard de Vauchel. France was the fourth country to achieve nuclear capability and has the third largest nuclear weapons arsenal in the world. It is also a leader in civilian nuclear technology. France was the third nation, after the Soviet Union and the United States, to launch its space satellite and the first to establish a commercial launch service provider, Ariane Space. The French National Space Program, CNES, is the third oldest in the world, and the oldest, largest, and most active in Europe. France is a founding member of the European Space Agency, ESA, contributing over a quarter of its budget, the most of any member state. ESA is headquartered in Paris, has its principal spaceport in French Guiana, and utilizes the French-made Ariane 5 as its primary launch vehicle. Airbus 
a leading aerospace company and the world's largest airline manufacturer, was formed partly from the French company Aerospatial. Its main commercial airline business is conducted through its French division, Airbus SAS France also hosts major international research facilities, including the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility, the Institut La Landevin, and Minetic, Europe's leading nanotechnology research center. It is also a major member of CERN, which operates the largest particle physics laboratory in the world and is its third largest contributor. France pioneered and hosts ITER, an international effort to develop nuclear fusion energy, which is the world's biggest mega project. The TGV, developed by France's national railway company, the SNCF, is a high speed train that holds a series of world speed records. In 2007, it became the fastest commercial wheeled train, achieving a speed of 574.8 km/h 350. 7.2 mph. As of 2021, it is the third fastest train in the world, surpassed only by maglev models that utilize magnetic levitation. Western Europe is now serviced by a network of TGV lines. The Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique CNRS, the state research agency, is the largest research institute in Europe and among the most prominent internationally, according to the 2020 Nature Index, it ranks fourth in the share of articles published in scientific journals worldwide, with France as a whole having the sixth highest share. As of 2022, France ranks fourth in the number of Nobel laureates, with 70 French people having been awarded a Nobel Prize. Twelve French mathematicians have received a Fields Medal, considered the most prestigious award in the field, making up one-fifth of total recipients, and second only to the United States. France ranked 12th in the 2022 Global Innovation Index, compared to 12th in 2020 and 16th in 2019. Demographics With an estimated July 2022 population of 67,897,000 people, France is the 20th most populous country in the world, the third most populous in Europe after Russia and Germany, and the second most populous in the European Union after Germany. France is an outlier among developed countries, particularly in Europe, for its relatively high rate of natural population growth by birth rates alone, it was responsible for almost all natural population growth in the European Union in 2006. Between 2006 and 2016, France saw the second highest overall increase in population in the EU and was one of only four EU countries where natural births accounted for the most population growth. This was the highest rate since the end of the baby boom in 1973 and coincides with the rise of the total fertility rate from a nadir of 1.7 in 1994 to 2.0 in 2010. As of January 2021, the fertility rate declined slightly to 1.84 children per woman, below the replacement rate of 2.1, and considerably below the high of 4.41 in 1800. France's fertility rate and crude birth rate nonetheless remain among the highest in the EU. However, like many developed nations, the French population is aging, the average age is 41.7 years, while about a fifth of French people is 65 or over. The average life expectancy at birth is 82.7 years, the 12th highest in the world. From 2006 to 2011, population growth averaged 0.6% per year since 2011, Annual growth has been between 0.4 and 0.5 percent annually. Immigrants are major contributors to this trend. In 2010, 27 percent of newborns in metropolitan France had at least one foreign born parent, and another 24 percent had at least one parent born outside Europe, excluding French overseas territories. Ethnic groups. Most French people are of Celtic Gallic origin, 
with a significant admixture of Italic Romans and Germanic Franks groups reflecting centuries of respective migration and settlement. Through the course of the Middle Ages, France incorporated various neighboring ethnic and linguistic groups, as evidenced by Breton elements in the West, Aquitanian in the Southwest, Scandinavian in the Northwest, Alemannic in the Northeast, and Ligurian in the Southeast. Large-scale immigration over the last century and a half have led to a more multicultural society, beginning with the French Revolution, and further codified in the French Constitution of 1958, the government is prohibited from collecting data on ethnicity and ancestry. Most demographic information is drawn from private sector organizations or academic institutions. In 2004, the Institut Maintaini estimated that within metropolitan France, 51 million people were white, 85% of the population, 6 million were Northwest African, 10%, 2 million were black, 3.3%, and 1 million were Asian, 1.7%. 1 a 2008 poll conducted jointly by INED and the French National Institute of Statistics estimated that the largest ancestry groups were Italian, 5 million, followed by Northwest African, 3 minus 6 million, Sub-Saharan African 2.5 million, Armenian 500,000, and Turkish 200,000. There are also sizable minorities of other European ethnic groups, namely Spanish, Portuguese, Polish, and Greek. France has a significant Gitan Romani population, numbering between 20,000 and 400,000. Many foreign Roma are expelled back to Bulgaria and Romania frequently. Immigration. It is currently estimated that 40% of the French population is descended at least partially from the different waves of immigration since the early 20th century. Between 1921 and 1935 alone, about 1.1 million net immigrants came to France. The next largest wave came in the 1960s when around 1.6 million Pieds Noirs returned to France following the independence of its Northwest African possessions, Algeria and Morocco. They were joined by numerous former colonial subjects from North and West Africa, as well as numerous European immigrants from Spain and Portugal. France remains a major destination for immigrants, accepting about 200,000 legal immigrants annually. In 2005, it was Western Europe's leading recipient of asylum seekers, with an estimated 50,000 applications, albeit a 15% decrease from 2004. In 2010, France received about 48,100 asylum applications, placing it among the top five asylum recipients in the world and in subsequent years it saw the number of applications increase, ultimately doubling to 100,412 in 2017. The European Union allows free movement between the member states, although France established controls to curb Eastern European migration, and immigration remains a contentious political issue. In 2008, the NC National Institute of Statistics and Economic Studies estimated that the total number of foreign-born immigrants was around 5,008% of the population, while their French-born descendants numbered 6.5 million, or 11% of the population. Thus, nearly a fifth of the country's population were either first- or second-generation immigrants, of which more than 5 million were of European origin and 4 million of Maghrebi ancestry. In 2008, France granted citizenship to 137,000 persons, mostly from Morocco, Algeria, and Turkey. In 2014, the INSEE reported a significant increase in the number of immigrants coming from Spain, Portugal, and Italy between 2009 and 2012. According to the French Institute, this increase resulted from the financial crisis that hit several European countries in that period. Statistics on Spanish immigrants in France show a growth of 107% between 2009 and 2012, with the population growing from 5,300 to 11,000. 
of the total of 229,000 foreigners who were in France in 2012, nearly 8% were Portuguese, 5% British, 5% Spanish, 4% Italian, 4% German, 3% Romanian, and 3% Belgian. Major Cities France is a highly urbanized country, with its largest cities in terms of metropolitan area population in 2019 being Paris 13 million, 114,718 N, Lyon 2,280,845, Marseille 1,873,270, Lille 1,510,079, Toulouse, 1,454,158, Bordeaux, 1,363,711, Nantes, 1,011,020, Strasbourg, 853,110, Montpellier, 801,595, and Rennes, 755,668. Note, since its 2020 revision of metropolitan area borders in C considers that Nice is a metropolitan area separate from the Cannes Antibes metropolitan area, these two combined would have a population of 1,008,296 as of the 2019 census. Rural flight was a perennial political issue throughout most of the 20th century. Language. According to Article 2 of the Constitution, the official language of France is French, a Romance language derived from Latin. Since 1635, the Académie Française has been France's official authority on the French language, although its recommendations carry no legal weight. There are also regional languages spoken in France, such as Occitan, Breton, Catalan, Flemish Dutch dialect, Alsatian German dialect, Basque, and Corsican Italian dialect. Italian was the official language of Corsica until 9 May 1859. The government of France does not regulate the choice of language in publications by individuals, but the use of French is required by law in commercial and workplace communications. In addition to mandating the use of French in the territory of the Republic, the French government tries to promote French in the European Union and globally through institutions such as the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. The perceived threat from Anglicization has prompted efforts to safeguard the position of the French language in France. Besides French, there exist 77 vernacular minority languages of France, 8 spoken in French metropolitan territory and 69 in the French overseas territories. From the 17th to the mid-20th century, French served as the preeminent international language of diplomacy and international affairs as well as a lingua franca among the educated classes of Europe. The dominant position of the French language in international affairs was overtaken by English since the emergence of the United States as a major power. For most of the time in which French served as an international lingua franca, it was not the native language of most Frenchmen. A report in 1794 conducted by Henry Gregor found that of the country's 25 million people, only 3 million spoke French natively. The rest spoke one of the country's many regional languages, such as Alsatian, Breton, or Occitan. Through the expansion of public education, in which French was the sole language of instruction as well as other factors such as increased urbanization and the rise of mass communication, French gradually came to be adopted by virtually the entire population, a process not completed until the 20th century. As a result of France's extensive colonial ambitions between the 17th and 20th centuries, French was introduced to the Americas, Africa, Polynesia, Southeast Asia, as well as the Caribbean. French is the second most studied foreign language in the world after English, and is a lingua franca in some regions, notably in Africa. The legacy of French as a living language outside Europe is mixed. It is nearly extinct in some former French colonies, the Levant, 
South and Southeast Asia, while Creoles and pigeons based on French have emerged in the French departments in the West Indies and the South Pacific French Polynesia. On the other hand, many former French colonies have adopted French as an official language, and the total number of French speakers is increasing, especially in Africa. It is estimated that between 300 million and 500 million people worldwide can speak French, either as a mother tongue or as a second language. According to the 2007 Adult Education Survey, part of a project by the European Union and carried out in France by the INSEE and based on a sample of 15,350 persons, French was the native language of 87.2% of the total population, or roughly 55.81 million people, followed by Arabic 3.6%, 2.3 million, Portuguese, 1.5%, 960,000, Spanish, 1.2%, 770,000, and Italian, 1.0%, 640,000. Native speakers of other languages made up the remaining 5.2% of the population. Religion. France is a secular country in which freedom of religion is a constitutional right. French religious policy is based on the concept of laïcité, a strict separation of church and state under which public life is kept completely secular. The exception to this is the region of Alsace and Mosul, where Lutheranism, Catholicism, and Judaism enjoy official status and state funding. According to a survey held in 2016 by Institut Maintaini and Institut Francais d'Opinion Publique IFA, 51.1% of the total population of France was Christian, 39.6% had no religion, atheism or agnosticism, 5.6% were Muslims, 2.5% were followers of other faiths, and the remaining 0.4% were undecided about their faith. Estimates of the number of Muslims in France vary widely. In 2003, the French Ministry of the Interior estimated the total number of people of Muslim background to be between 5 and 6 million, 8 minus 10 percent. The current Jewish community in France is the largest in Europe and the third largest in the world after Israel and the United States, ranging between 480,000 and 600,000, about 0.8% of the population as of 2016. Catholicism has been the predominant religion in France for more than a millennium, though it is not as actively practiced today as it was. Among the 47,000 religious buildings in France, 94% are Roman Catholic. During the French Revolution, Activists conducted a brutal campaign of dechristianization, ending the Catholic Church as the state religion. In some cases, clergy and churches were attacked, with iconoclasm stripping the churches of statues and ornaments. After alternating between royal and secular republican governments during the 19th century, in 1905, France passed the 1905 Law on the Separation of the Churches and the State, which established the principle of laïcité. To this day, the government is prohibited from recognizing any specific right to a religious community except for legacy statutes like those of military chaplains and the local law in Alsace Mosul. It recognizes religious organizations according to formal legal criteria that do not address religious doctrine. Conversely, Religious organizations are expected to refrain from intervening in policymaking. Certain groups, such as Scientology, Children of God, the Unification Church, or the Order of the Solar Temple, are considered cults sects in French, therefore they do not have the same status as recognized religions in France. Sect is considered a pejorative term in France. Elf the French health care system is one of universal health care largely financed by government national health insurance. In its 2000 assessment of world health care systems, the World Health Organization found that France provided the close to best overall health care in the world. The French health care system was ranked first worldwide by the World Health Organization in 1997. 
In 2011, France spent 11.6% of its GDP on health care, or U.S. 86 per capita, a figure much higher than the average spent by countries in Europe but less than in the United States. Approximately 77% of health expenditures are covered by government-funded agencies. Care is generally free for people affected by chronic diseases, affections de longues, duries, such as cancer, AIDS, or cystic fibrosis. Average life expectancy at birth is 78 years for men and 85 years for women, one of the highest in the European Union and the world. There are 3.22 physicians for every 1,000 inhabitants in France, and average health care spending per capita was U.S. 719 in 2008. As of 2007, approximately 140,000 inhabitants, 0.4% of France are living with HIV AIDS, even if the French have the reputation of being one of the thinnest people in developed countries, France, like other rich countries, faces an increasing and recent epidemic of obesity due mostly to the replacement in French eating habits of traditional healthy French cuisine by junk food. The French obesity rate is still far below that of the United States currently, equal to the American rate in the 1970s and is still the lowest in Europe. Authorities now regard obesity as one of the main public health issues and fight it fiercely. Rates of childhood obesity are slowing in France while continuing to grow in other countries. Education. In 1802, Napoleon created the Lycée, the second and final stage of secondary education that prepares students for higher education studies or a profession. Nevertheless, Jules Ferry is considered the father of the French modern school, leading reforms in the late 19th century that established free, secular, and compulsory education currently mandatory until the age of 16. French education is centralized and divided into three stages primary, secondary, and higher education. The Program for International Student Assessment, coordinated by the OECD, ranked France's education as near the OECD average in 2018. France was one of the PISA participating countries where school children perceived some of the lowest levels of support and feedback from their teachers. School children in France reported greater concern about the disciplinary climate and behavior in classrooms compared to other OECD countries. Primary and secondary education are predominantly public and run by the Ministry of National Education, while training and remuneration of teachers and the curriculum are the responsibility of the state centrally. The management of primary and secondary schools is overseen by local authorities. Primary education comprises two phases, nursery school, a coal maternal and elementary school, a coal elementaire. Nursery school aims to stimulate the minds of very young children and promote their socialization and development of a basic grasp of language and numbers. Around the age of six, children transfer to elementary school, whose primary objectives are learning about writing, arithmetic and citizenship. Secondary education also consists of two phases. The first is delivered through colleges, college, and leads to the National Certificate Diplôme National du Brevet. The second is offered in high schools, lycée, and finishes in national exams, leading to a baccalaureate available in professional, technical, or general flavors, or Certificate of Professional Competence Certificate Daptitude Professional. Higher education is divided between public universities and the prestigious and selective grands écoles, such as Sciences Po Paris for Political Studies, HEC Paris for Economics, Polytechnique, the École des Hautes Études and Sciences Socials for Social Studies and the École Nationale Supérieure des Mines de Paris that produce high-profile engineers, or the École Nationale d'Administration for Careers in the Grands Corps of the State. The Grands Écoles have been criticized for alleged elitism, producing many, if not most, of France's high-ranking civil servants, CEO, and politicians. Culture 
France has been a center of Western cultural development for centuries and a cultural superpower. Many French artists have been among the most renowned of their time. France is still recognized in the world for its rich cultural tradition. The successive political regimes have always promoted artistic creation. The creation of the Ministry of Culture in 1959 helped preserve the cultural heritage of the country and make it available to the public. The Ministry of Culture has been very active since its creation, granting subsidies to artists, promoting French culture in the world, supporting festivals and cultural events, and protecting historical monuments. The French government also succeeded in maintaining a cultural exception to defend audiovisual products made in the country. France receives the highest number of tourists per year, largely thanks to the numerous cultural establishments and historical buildings implanted all over the territory. It counts 1,200 museums, welcoming more than 50 million people annually. The most important cultural sites are run by the government, for instance, through the public agency Centre des Monuments Nationaux, which is responsible for approximately 85 national historical monuments. The 43,180 buildings protected as historical monuments include mainly residences, many castles and religious buildings, cathedrals, basilicas, churches, but also statues, memorials and gardens. UNESCO inscribed 45 sites in France on the World Heritage List. Art. The origins of French art were very much influenced by Flemish art and by Italian art at the time of the Renaissance. Jean Fouquet, the most famous medieval French painter, is said to have been the first to travel to Italy and experience the early Renaissance firsthand. The Renaissance painting school of Fontainebleau was directly inspired by Italian painters such as Prima Tixio and Rosso Fiorentino, who both worked in France. Two of the most famous French artists of the time of the Baroque era, Nicolas Poussin and Claude Lorraine, lived in Italy. The 17th century was the period when French painting became prominent and individualized itself through classicism. Prime Minister Jean-Baptiste Colbert founded 1648 the Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture under Louis Roman XIV to protect these artists. In 1666 he also created the still active French Academy in Rome to have direct relations with Italian artists. French artists developed the Rococo style in the 18th century as a more intimate imitation of the old Baroque style, the works of the court endorsed artists Antoine Moiteau, Francois Boucher, and Jean Honoré Fragonard being the most representative in the country. The French Revolution brought great changes, as Napoleon favored artists of neoclassic style such as Jacques Louis David and the highly influential Académie des Beaux-Arts defined the style known as Academyism. At this time France had become a center of artistic creation, the first half of the 19th century being dominated by two successive movements, at first Romanticism with Théodore Gericault and Eugène de Lacroix, then Realism with Camille Corot, Gustave Kerbet, and Jean-Francois Millet, a style that eventually evolved into naturalism. In the second part of the 19th century, Francie's influence over painting became even more important, with the development of new styles of painting such as Impressionism and Symbolism. The most famous Impressionist painters of the period were Camille Pissarro, Edouard Manet, Edgar Degas, Claude Monet, and Auguste Renoir. The second generation of Impressionist style painters, Paul Cézanne, Paul Gauguin, Toulouse Lautrec, and Georges Suret, were also at the avant garde of artistic evolutions, as well as the Fauvist artists Henri Matisse, and Ray Durain, and Maurice de Vlamic. At the beginning of the 20th century, Cubism was developed by Georges Braque and the Spanish painter Pablo Picasso, living in Paris. Other foreign artists also settled and worked in or near Paris, such as Vincent van Gogh, Marc Chagall, Andio Modigliani, and Wassily Kandinsky. Many museums in France are entirely or partly devoted to sculptures and paintings works. 
a huge collection of old masterpieces created before or during the 18th century are displayed in the state-owned Musée du Louvre, such as the Mona Lisa, also known as Le Jaconte. While the Louvre Palace has been for a long time a museum, the Musée d'Orsay was inaugurated in 1980, six in the old railway station Gare d'Orsay, in a major reorganization of national art collections, to gather French paintings from the second part of the 19th century, mainly Impressionism and Fauvism movements. The Musée d'Orsay was voted in 2018 the best museum in the world. Modern works are presented in the Musée National Dark Modern, which moved in 1976 to the Centre Georges Pompidou. These three state-owned museums welcome close to 17 million people a year. Other national museums hosting paintings include the Grand Palais 1.3 million visitors in 2008, but there are also many museums owned by cities, the most visited being the Musée d'Art Modern de la Ville de Paris 0.8 million entries in 2008, which hosts contemporary works. Outside Paris, all the large cities have a museum of fine arts with a section dedicated to European and French painting. Some of the finest collections are in Lyon, Lille, Rouen, Dijon, Rennes, and Grenoble. Architecture During the Middle Ages, many fortified castles were built by feudal nobles to mark their powers. Some French castles that survived are Chinon, Chata d'Angers, the massive Chateau de Vincennes and the so-called Cathar castles. During this era, France had been using Romanesque architecture like most of Western Europe. Some of the greatest examples of Romanesque churches in France are the St. Cernan Basilica in Toulouse, the largest Romanesque church in Europe, and the remains of the Cluny Abbey. Gothic architecture, originally named Apis Francigenum, meaning French work, was born in Isle de France and was the first French style of architecture to be copied in all of Europe. Northern France is the home of some of the most important Gothic cathedrals and basilicas, the first of these being the St. Denis Basilica used as the royal necropolis. Other important French Gothic cathedrals are Notre Dame de Chartres and Notre Dame d'Amiens. The kings were crowned in another important Gothic church, Notre Dame de Rheims. Aside from churches, Gothic architecture had been used for many religious palaces, the most important one being the Palais des Pates in Avignon. The final victory in the Hundred Years War marked an important stage in the evolution of French architecture. It was the time of the French Renaissance and several artists from Italy were invited to the French court. Many residential palaces were built in the Loire Valley from 1450, as a first reference, the Chateau de Montserrat. Such residential castles were the Chateau de Chambord, the Chateau de Chenonceau, or the Chateau d'Ambois. Following the Renaissance and the end of the Middle Ages, Baroque architecture replaced the traditional Gothic style. However, in France, Baroque architecture found greater success in the secular domain than in the religious one. In the secular domain, the Palace of Versailles has many Baroque features. Jules Hardouin Mansart, who designed the extensions to Versailles, was one of the most influential French architects of the Baroque era. He is famous for his dome at Les Invalides. Some of the most impressive provincial Baroque architecture is found in places that were not yet French, such as Place Stanislas in Nancy. On the military architectural side, Vauban designed some of the most efficient fortresses in Europe and became an influential military architect. As a result, imitations of his works can be found all over Europe, the Americas, Russia, and Turkey. After the Revolution, the Republicans favored neoclassicism, although it was introduced in France before the Revolution with such buildings as the Parisian Pantheon or the Capitole de Toulouse. Built during the First French Empire, the Arc de Triomphe and Saint Marie Madeleine represent the best example of empire style architecture. Under Napoleon Roman III, a new wave of urbanism and architecture was given birth. Extravagant buildings such as the neo baroque Palais Garnier were built. The urban planning of the time was very organized and rigorous, most notably, 
Haussmann's renovation of Paris. The architecture associated with this era is named Second Empire in English, the term being taken from the Second French Empire. At this time there was a strong Gothic resurgence across Europe and in France. The associated architect was Eugene Violet Leduc. In the late 19th century, Gustave Eiffel designed many bridges, such as the Garabit Viaduct, and remains one of the most influential bridge designers of his time, although he is best remembered for the iconic Eiffel Tower. In the 20th century, French-Swiss architect Le Corbusier designed several buildings in France. More recently, French architects have combined both modern and old architectural styles. The Louvre Pyramid is an example of modern architecture added to an older building. The most difficult buildings to integrate within French cities are skyscrapers, as they are visible from afar. For instance, in Paris, since 1977, new buildings had to be under 37 meters, 121 ft. France's largest financial district is La Défense, where a significant number of skyscrapers are located. Other massive buildings that are a challenge to integrate into their environment are large bridges. An example of the way this has been done is the Milau Viaduct. Some famous modern French architects include Jean Nouvel, Dominique Perrault, Christian de Port Saint Parc, and Paul Ando. Literature. The earliest French literature dates from the Middle Ages when what is now known as modern France did not have a single, uniform language. There were several languages and dialects, and writers used their spelling and grammar. Some authors of French medieval texts are unknown, such as Tristan and Isolt and Lancelot Grail. Other authors are known, for example, Cratian de Troyes and Duke William Roman IX of Aquitaine, who wrote in Occitan. Much medieval French poetry and literature were inspired by the legends of the matter of France, such as the Song of Roland and the various chansons de Geste. The Roman de Renart, written in 1175 by Perrault de Saint Cloud, tells the story of the medieval character Reynard the Fox and is another example of early French writing. An important 16th century writer was Francois Rabelais, whose novel Gargantua and Pantagruel has remained famous and appreciated until now. Mitchell de Mantegna was another major figure of French literature during that century. His most famous work, Essays, created the literary genre of the essay. French poetry during that century was embodied by Pierre de Ronsard and Joachim du Bellay. Both writers founded the La Pléiade literary movement. In 1678, Madame de Lafayette published anonymously La Princesse de Cleves, a novel that is considered to be one of the first psychological novels of all time. Jean de La Fontaine is one of the most famous fabulists of that time, as he wrote hundreds of fables, some being far more famous than others, such as The Ant and the Grasshopper. Generations of French pupils had to learn his fables, which were seen as helping teach wisdom and common sense to the young people. Some of his verses have entered the popular language to become proverbs, such as at Il Louvre on Canate El Artisan. A workman is known by his chips. Jean Racine, whose incredible mastery of the Alexandrine and the French language has been praised for centuries, created plays such as Feder or Britannicus. He is, along with Pierre Corneal, Lacide, and Molière, considered one of the three great dramatists of France's golden age. Molière, who is deemed to be one of the greatest masters of comedy in Western literature, wrote dozens of plays, including Le Misanthrope, El Aver, Le Malade Imaginaire, as well as Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme. His plays have been so popular around the world that the French language is sometimes dubbed as the language of Molière, la langue de Molière, just like English is considered the language of Shakespeare. French literature and poetry flourished even more in the 18th and 19th centuries. Denis Diderot's best known works are Jacques the Fatalist and Raymond's nephew. He is, however, best known for being the main redactor of the Encyclopédie whose aim was to sum up all the knowledge of his century in fields such as arts, 
sciences, languages, and philosophy and to present them to the people to fight ignorance and obscurantism. During that same century, Charles Perrault was a prolific writer of famous children's fairy tales including Puss in Boots, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Bluebeard. At the start of the 19th century, symbolist poetry was an important movement in French literature, with poets such as Charles Baudelaire, Paul Verlaine, and Stéphane Mallarmé. The 19th century saw the writings of many renowned French authors. Victor Hugo is sometimes seen as the greatest French writer of all time for excelling in all literary genres. The preface of his play Cromwell is considered to be the manifesto of the Romantic movement. Less contemplations and la legende des cycles are considered poetic masterpieces. Hugo's verse has been compared to that of Shakespeare, Dante, and Homer. His novel Les Miserables is widely seen as one of the greatest novels ever written, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame has remained immensely popular. Other major authors of that century include Alexander Dumas' The Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo, Jules Verne, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, Emile Zola, Les Raugon Macourt, Honoré de Balzac, La Camille Humaine, Guy de Maupassant, Theophile Gautier, and Stendhal the Red and the Black, The Charter House of Parma, whose works are among the most well known in France and the world. The Prix Goncourt is a French literary prize first awarded in 1903. In the early 20th century, France was a haven for literary freedom. Works banned for obscenity in the U.S., the U.K., and other Anglophone nations were published in France decades before they were available in the respective authors' home countries. The innate French regard for the mind meant that France was disinclined to punish literary figures for their writing, and prosecutions were rare. Important writers of the 20th century include Marcel Proust, Louis Ferdinand Céline, Albert Camus, and Jean-Paul Sartre. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry wrote Little Prince, which has remained popular for decades with children and adults around the world. As of 2014, French authors had more literature Nobel Prizes than those of any other nation. The first Nobel Prize in literature was for a French author while France's latest Nobel Prize in Literature is for Patrick Modiano, who was awarded the prize in 2014. Jean-Paul Sartre was also the first nominee in the committee's history to refuse the prize in 1964. Philosophy Medieval philosophy was dominated by scholasticism until the emergence of humanism in the Renaissance. Modern philosophy began in France in the 17th century with the philosophy of René Descartes, Blaise Pascal, and Nicolas Malebranche. Descartes was the first Western philosopher since ancient times to attempt to build a philosophical system from the ground up rather than building on the work of predecessors. His meditations on first philosophy changed the primary object of philosophical thought and raised some of the most fundamental problems for foreigners such as Spinoza, Leibniz, Hume, Berkeley, and Kant. French philosophers produced some of the most important political works of the Age of Enlightenment. In the spirit of the laws, Baron de Montesquieu theorized the principle of separation of powers which has been implemented in all liberal democracies since it was first applied in the United States. Voltaire came to embody the Enlightenment with his defense of civil liberties, such as the right to a free trial and freedom of religion. Nineteenth-century French thought was targeted at responding to the social malaise following the French Revolution. Rationalist philosophers such as Victor Cousin and Auguste Comte, who called for a new social doctrine, were opposed by reactionary thinkers such as Joseph de Maister, Louis de Bonald, and Felicite Robert de Lainais, who blamed the rationalist rejection of traditional order. De Maister, together with the Englishman Edmund Burke, was one of the founders of European conservatism. Comte was the founder of positivism, which Emile Durkheim reformulated as a basis for social research. In the 20th century, partly as a reaction to the perceived excesses of positivism, 
French spiritualism thrived with thinkers such as Henry Bergson, and it influenced American pragmatism and Whitehead's version of process philosophy. Meanwhile, French epistemology became a prominent school of thought with Jules Henry Poincaré, Gaston Bachelard, Jean Cavales, and Jules Vuillemin. Influenced by German phenomenology and existentialism, the philosophy of Jean Paul Sartre gained a strong influence after World War Roman II, and late 20th century France became the cradle of postmodern philosophy with Jean Francois Lyotard, Jean Baudrillard, Jack Derrida, and Mitchell Foucault. Cinema France has historical and strong links with cinema, with two Frenchmen. August and Louis Lumiere, known as the Lumiere brothers, credited with creating cinema in 1895. The world's first female filmmaker, Alice Guy Blachet, was also from France. Several important cinematic movements, including the late 1950s and 1960s Nouvelle Vague, began in the country. It is noted for having a strong film industry due in part to protections afforded by the government of France. France remains a leader in filmmaking as of 2015 producing more films than any other European country. The nation also hosts the Cannes Festival, one of the most important and famous film festivals in the world. Apart from its strong and innovative film tradition, France has also been a gathering spot for artists from across Europe and the world. For this reason, French cinema is sometimes intertwined with the cinema of foreign nations. Directors from nations such as Poland Roman Polanski, K.R. Zistov Kieslowski, Anna Zedge Zalowski, Argentina Gaspar Ney, Edgardo Kazarinski, Russia Alexander Alexeyev, Anatol Litvak, Austria Michael Haink, and Georgia Gela Bebloani, Utter I. Seliani are prominent in the ranks of French cinema. Conversely, French directors have had prolific and influential careers in other countries, such as Luc Besson, Jack Tournoir, or Francis Weber in the United States. Although the French film market is dominated by Hollywood, France is the only nation in the world where American films make up the smallest share of total film revenues at 50%, compared with 77% in Germany and 69% in Japan. French films account for 35% of the total film revenues of France, which is the highest percentage of national film revenues in the developed world outside the United States, compared to 14% in Spain and 8% in the UK. France is 2013 the second exporter of films in the world after the United States. France historically was the cultural center of the world, although its dominant position has been surpassed by the United States. Today, France takes steps in protecting and promoting its culture, becoming a leading advocate of cultural exception. The nation succeeded in convincing all EU members to refuse to include culture and audiovisuals in the list of liberalized sectors of the WTO in 1993. Moreover, this decision was confirmed in a vote by UNESCO in 2005, the principle of cultural exception won an overwhelming victory with 198 countries voting for it and only two countries, the United States and Israel, voting against it. Fashion Fashion has been an important industry and cultural export of France since the 17th century, and modern haute couture originated in Paris in the 1860s. Today, Paris along with London, Milan, and New York City, is considered one of the world's fashion capitals, and the city is home or headquarters to many of the premier fashion houses. The expression haute couture is, in France, a legally protected name guaranteeing certain quality standards. The association of France with fashion and style French La mode dates largely to the reign of Louis Roman XIV when the luxury goods industries in France came increasingly under royal control and the French royal court became, arguably, the arbiter of taste and style in Europe. 
but France renewed its dominance of the high-fashion French couture or haute couture industry in the years 1860-1960 through the establishment of the great coucherier houses such as Chanel, Dior, and Givenchy. The French perfume industry is the world leader in its sector and is centered on the town of Grasse. In the 1960s, the elitist haute couture came under criticism from France's youth culture. In 1966, the designer Yves Saint Laurent broke with established haute couture norms by launching a Pret at Porter Ready to Wear line and expanding French fashion into mass manufacturing. With a greater focus on marketing and manufacturing, new trends were established by Sonia Reichel, Thierry Mudler, Claude Montana, Jean Paul Gaultier, and Christian Lacroix in the 1970s and 1980s. The 1990s saw a conglomeration of many French couture houses under luxury giants and multinationals, such as LVMH. According to 2017 data compiled by Deloitte, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy LVMH, a French brand, is the largest luxury company in the world by sales, selling more than twice the amount of its nearest competitor. Moreover, France also possesses three of the top ten luxury goods companies by sales LVMH, Curring S.A. L. Oreal, more than any other country in the world. Media Best-selling daily national newspapers in France are Le Parisien, Auger Tui and France with 460,000 sold daily, Le Monde and Le Figaro, with around 300,000 copies sold daily, but also L'Equipe, dedicated to sports coverage. In the past years, free dailies made a breakthrough with Metro, 20 Minutes, and Direct Plus distributed at more than 650,000 copies respectively. However, the widest circulations are reached by the regional daily Aouest France with more than 750,000 copies sold, and the 50 other regional papers have also high sales. The sector of weekly magazines is stronger and diversified with more than 400 specialized weekly magazines published in the country. The most influential news magazines are the left-wing Le Nouvel Observateur, centrist El Express and right-wing Le Point more than 400,000 copies, but the highest circulation for weeklies is reached by TV magazines and by women's magazines, among them Marie Claire and Elle, which have foreign versions. Influential weeklies also include investigative and satirical papers Le Canard and Chenet and Charlie Hebdo, as well as Paris Match. Like in most industrialized nations, the print media have been affected by a severe crisis in the past decade. In 2008, the government launched a major initiative to help the sector reform and become financially independent but in 2009 it had to give 600,000 euros to help the print media cope with the economic crisis in addition to existing subsidies. In 1974, after years of centralized monopoly on radio and television, the governmental agency ORTF was split into several national institutions, but the three already existing TV channels and four national radio stations remain under state control. It was only in 1981 that the government allowed free broadcasting in the territory, ending the state monopoly on radio. French television was partly liberalized in the next two decades with the creation of several commercial channels, mainly thanks to cable and satellite television. In 2005, the national service Télévision Numérique Terrestre introduced digital television all over the territory, allowing the creation of other channels. The four existing national channels are owned by the state-owned consortium France Televisions, funded by advertising revenue and TV license fees. Public Broadcasting Group Radio France runs five national radio stations. Among these, public media are Radio France Internationale, which broadcasts programs in French all over the world, as well as Franco-German TV channel TV5 Monde. In 2006, the government created the global news channel France 24. Long-established TV channels T-Phone privatized in 1987, 
France 2 and France 3 have the highest shares, whilst radio stations RTL, Europe 1 and state-owned France Inter are some of the least listened to. Society. According to a BBC poll in 2010, based on 29,977 responses in 28 countries, France is globally seen as a positive influence in the world's affairs, 49% have a positive view of the country's influence, whereas 19% have a negative view. The Nation Brand Index of 2008 suggested that France has the second-best international reputation, only behind Germany. A global opinion poll for the BBC saw France ranked the fourth most positively viewed nation in the world behind Germany, Canada, and the United Kingdom in 2014. According to a poll in 2011, the French were found to have the highest level of religious tolerance and to be the country where the highest proportion of the population defines its identity primarily in term of nationality and not religion. As of 2011, 75% of French had a favorable view of the United States, making France one of the most pro-American countries in the world. As of 2017, the favorable view of the United States had dropped to 46%. In January 2010, the magazine International Living ranked France as best country to live in, ahead of 193 other countries, for the fifth year running. The OECD Better Life Index states that France performs well in many measures of well-being relative to most other countries in the Better Life Index. The French Revolution continues to permeate the country's collective memory. The tricolor flag of France, the anthem La Marseillaise, and the Monto Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, defined in Title I of the Constitution as national symbols, all emerged during the cultural ferment of the early revolution, along with Marion, a common national personification. In addition, Bastille Day, the national holiday, commemorates the storming of the Bastille on 14 July 1789. A common and traditional symbol of the French people is the Gallic rooster. Its origins date back to antiquity since the Latin word Gallus meant both rooster and inhabitant of Gaul. Then, this figure gradually became the most widely shared representation of the French, used by French monarchs, then by the Revolution and under the successive Republican regimes as representation of the national identity, used for some stamps and coins. France is one of the world leaders of gender equality in the workplace, as of 2017, it has 36.8% of its corporate board seats held by women, which makes it the leader of the G20 for that matter. It was ranked in 2019 by the World Bank as one of the only six countries in the world where women have the same work rights as men. France is one of the most liberal countries in the world when it comes to LGBT rights, a 2020 Pew Research Center poll found that 86% of the French think that same-sex relationships should be accepted by society, one of the highest acceptance rates in the world comparable to that of other Western European nations. France legalized same-sex marriage and adoption in 2013. The government has used its diplomatic clout to support LGBT rights throughout the world, notably in the United Nations. In 2020, France was ranked fifth in the Environmental Performance Index behind the United Kingdom, out of 180 countries ranked by Yale University in that study. Being the host country of the 2015 Paris Climate Change Conference, the French government was instrumental in securing the 2015 Paris Agreement, a success that has been credited to its openness and experience in diplomacy. Cuisine French cuisine is renowned for being one of the finest in the world. According to the regions, traditional recipes are different. The north of the country prefers to use butter as the preferred fat for cooking, whereas olive oil is more commonly used in the south. Moreover, each region of France has iconic traditional specialties, cassellet in the southwest, choucraut in Alsace, quiche in the Lorraine region, beef bourguignon in the Burgundy, Proven Sultapenade, etc. 
Francie's most renowned products are wines, including Champagne, Bordeaux, Burgundy, and Beaujolais, as well as a large variety of different cheeses, such as Camembert, Roquefort, and Brie. There are more than 400 different varieties. A meal often consists of three courses, hors d'oeuvre or entry introductory course, sometimes soup, plat principal main course, fromage cheese course, or dessert, sometimes with a salad offered before the cheese or dessert. Hors d'oeuvres could include terrine de saumon au basilic, lobster bisque, foie gras, French onion soup, or a croque monsieur. The plat principal could include a pot au feu, souffle, or steak frites. The dessert could be mill fuel pastry, a macaron, an eclair, creme brulee, mousse au chocolat, crepes, far breton, or café légies. French cuisine is also regarded as a key element of the quality of life and the attractiveness of France. A French publication, the Michelin Guide awards Michelin stars for excellence to a select few establishments. The acquisition or loss of a star can have dramatic effects on the success of a restaurant. By 2006, the Michelin Guide had awarded 620 stars to French restaurants at that time more than any other country, although the guide also inspects more restaurants in France than in any other country. By 2010, Japan was awarded as many Michelin stars as France, despite having half the number of Michelin inspectors working there. In addition to its wine tradition, France is also a major producer of beer and rum. The three main French brewing regions are Alsace 60% of national production, Nord Pass de Calais and Lorraine. France produces rum via distilleries located on islands such as Reunion Island in the southern Indian Ocean. Sports France hosts the world's biggest annual sporting event, the Tour de France. Other popular sports played in France include football, judo, tennis, rugby union, and paytech. France has hosted events such as the 1938 and 1998 FIFA World Cups, the 2007 Rugby World Cup, and will host the 2023 Rugby World Cup. The country also hosted the 1960 European Nations Cup, U for Euro 1984, U for Euro 2016, and 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. The Stade de France in Saint Denis is France's largest stadium and was the venue for the 1998 FIFA World Cup and 2007 Rugby World Cup finals. Since 1923, France is famous for its 24 hours of Le Mans sports car endurance race. Several major tennis tournaments take place in France, including the Paris Masters and the French Open, one of the four Grand Slam tournaments. French martial arts include savate and fencing. France has a close association with the modern Olympic Games. It was the French aristocrat, Baron Pierre de Caubertin, who suggested the game's revival at the end of the 19th century. After Athens was awarded the first games in reference to the Olympics' Greek origins, Paris hosted the second games in 1900. Paris was the first home of the International Olympic Committee before it moved to Lausanne. Since 1900, France has hosted the Olympics on four further occasions the 1924 Summer Olympics, again in Paris, and three Winter Games, 1924 in Chamonix, 1968 in Grenoble, and 1992 in Albertville. Similar to the Olympics, France introduced Olympics for the Deaf People Deaf Olympics in 1924, with the idea of a French deaf car mechanic, Eugene Rubens Alcais, who paved the way to organize the inaugural edition of the Summer Deaf Olympics in Paris. Both the national football team and the national rugby union team are nicknamed Les Bleus in reference to the team's shirt color as well as the national French tricolor flag. Football is the most popular sport in France, with over 1 million. 800,000 registered players and over 18,000 registered clubs. The football team is among the most successful in the world, with two FIFA World Cup victories in 1998 and 2018, one FIFA World Cup second place in 2006, 
and two UEFA European Championships in 1984 and 2000. The top national football club competition is League One. France has produced some of the greatest players in the world, including three-time FIFA World Player of the Year Zinedine Zidane, three-time Ballon d'Or recipient Mitchell Platini, record holder for most goals scored at a World Cup Just Fontaine, first football player to receive the Legion d'Honneur Raymond Copa, and the record goal scorer for the French national team Thierry Henry. The French Open, also called Roland Garros, is a major tennis tournament held over two weeks between late May and early June at the Stade Roland Garros in Paris. It is the premier clay court tennis championship event in the world and the second of four annual Grand Slam tournaments. Rugby union is popular, particularly in Paris and the southwest of France. The national rugby union team has competed at every Rugby World Cup. It takes part in the annual Six Nations Championship. Thank you for watching. Consider supporting the channel, leave a like and subscribe.